Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. It's week 14. Mike, you always get a little antsy if I don't start the show at the exact same like uh, part of the song. That is very correct. <laughs> you look like, what's, what's going on? Where am I? What? Help me. Well, That's, it's, it's like the beginning of a race when you're you're sitting on the blocks and it goes, doot, doot. There's a rhythm to these things. And then when it doesn't go off at the same time, you got to understand. Freak out. I mean, we've done 152 shows this year. At some point in time, you know, when you go to a concert and you hear Metallica sing one of their favorites, sometimes they mix it up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's true, right? That's that's so true. So I just I sometimes I just have to start it differently. Got to I mean, keep people guessing. The melody has to be different. So welcome to the show. It's Thursday, December tenth. We are the fantasy footballers, and we are previewing week number fourteen in your fantasy season, your playoffs, your fantasy playoffs. Although I have I've heard from people that are fighting to get into the playoffs still. Yes, because depending on your league, if you got a two week playoff, something like that. So. We've got everything you need to know. We've got all the news and notes. We've got the first half of the game's matchups. We'll do the rest tomorrow. And then we've got our starts of the week. This is my favorite show of the week. I'm Andy Holloway. I'm joined, as always, by Jason Moore and Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Greetings. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to get started. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can find us on thefantasyfootballers.com. Got a fun Twitter story for you. Yesterday, uh, so Mike and I are facing off head-to-head in our league of record. Mono E. Man. All righty. I was trying to think of an insult. That didn't yeah, you, you know, it's all right. Man, that and was a good one. I took a... <laughs> got I, him. Got <laughs> Nailed it. Still got it. So I, I took a picture of our, our matchup, and I posted it on Twitter, and I posted a poll. And I said, you know, who, who's going to win? Me or Mike? Now, ESPN projects Mike as a winner by I've, five points. Which I think is ridiculous because it makes... Uh, they put the Jets ahead of the Chiefs. I don't like that this week. But I asked the general public. And somehow after about 545 votes yesterday, 50%, 50%. How does that happen? Dead heat because that's what it looks like. I know. And so we have a, a massive matchup this week. I know a lot of you out there have huge games that you're counting on. Good advice for us. So we're going to try to deliver on that today. Jason, who do you play this week? I play nobody. I'm on a bye week, but I am playing against my own emotions as I have lost Mark Ingram, my number one running back on the team that helped get me to the number one seed. Yeah, it's not... I mean, what a sucky situation to like. He didn't. Well, you he, saw this coming, right? He, well, yeah. I mean, we we the we did know about the shoulder injury. We you know, if you watched the last couple of weeks, you saw some changes. But I mean, all of a sudden, you wake up. I'm feeling great. Got the number one seed. Waiting for one of you two, you know, to come and 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 face me in the semis. And then it's like, oh yeah, hey, you don't have your you don't have your number one running back. Thankfully, I went depth this year, not by choice, but. I went depth, so I can roll Frank Gore in there, and hopefully I'll be okay. But uh, you might not- have to physically roll Frank Gore into <laughs> oh come on the lineup too. But <laughs> he ran good last game. <laughs> he did. He well, he scored. Is what you meant to say? No, he had some good good. Yeah, he was runs. he was all right. So, quick question of the day: What do you guys think the difference is between the number one fantasy kicker and the number ten fantasy kicker in points per game? This is a little quiz. Points and, per game. Uh, yeah, like what's okay. the difference? What's Average. the difference in so points per averaging. game between the number one fantasy kicker and the number ten? Hmm. Okay, so I assume that the number one is Goskowski. You assume correctly because because <laughs> it's the last fifteen years. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. I just just saying. I I don't actually know. Yeah, I'm just um, curious what you think the difference is. I'm gonna go an average of three points. All right. I'm gonna go an average of as much as I love having Guskowski. Kickers are kickers, so I'm gonna say. One and a half points. One point four points per week. Whoo! One nothing. Point four points per week, which begs the question: Why do we have kickers in fantasy? Thank you. Uh, I am the leader of the charge this for getting true. rid of kickers. Are Get you on the doorsteps of Congress with signs yeah, up? I, and- I have, I have, you know, done the ninety nine thesis on the door of, uh, <laughs> you know, of of Congress, just saying. Here's why we need to remove. Is that a the Martin kickers. Luther? Joke? That was a Martin <laughs> yes. Luther joke. Yes, it was. <laughs> well done. Oh, <laughs> dropping some of that in here. 
That is awesome. And yes, they should be gone. There was a hashtag on one of the posts when people were comparing Mike and I's team and it said kickers win championships. And the fact is <laughs> they might be right. Because if you, the difference is that, but it's a random difference. So if Mike ends up with five and I end up with 15 from a kicker, that's a big thing to overcome. It and ridiculous. it's completely unpredictable. It hurts the strategy and the skill of fantasy football, in my opinion. Do you think that the, oh, go ahead. The, the reason that you have kickers in, the only reason, that I can see justifiable for... Uh, I know, you know what you're going to say. ...is because they have kickers in the NFL. Yep. But if that's the case, then every league should be an IDP league because they have def they have defensive players in the NFL. Yeah. It, you're yeah, I you're mean, playing it, a different game, and I, I like to have the strategy of the guys you that you want to keep them. If you want to keep them, I say you hyper-nerf them. You've had a theory on that. If you're going to keep them in the league, because we're not going to get rid of them in our league of record. You're saying all this. We're never yeah. going to vote that away. Never going to happen. But you could do something like a field goal is worth three points. You don't get penalized for a miss. That's you know, it. You don't get penalized for an extra point miss. Yeah. And then it's just the, the, the scope well, of, of difference is so much smaller than if you get negatives and positives here's and the yardage with bonuses. That. Nope. Here's, here's the problem with that. When a, when a field goal kicker misses a 30-yard kick, they, they lose real life points, right? <laughs> they get well. The <laughs> NFL team loses a point. Yeah, no, they lose real life checks. Is what they lose. <laughs> now I know we're on a tangent here, but I do have. Right. I don't think I've ever brought this up before. It's December. I have. <laughs> I have a, a radical idea that I think is actually the better way forward. You ready for this? Indulgences. <laughs> no, defense slash special teams should be where the kicker gets points because they're special teams. That's part of, I mean, when you're drafting a team and you say, what team is good at defense and special teams so and you, things like you that? So you got the Patriots D, you just get Goskowski that week. Is yeah, what you're saying. You they're, start in, they're included in all of the defensive scoring and the special team scoring. I believe that that would allow defenses to be better skillfully chosen as well as the kicker points mattering but being able to look at game flow a little bit more and match up and say you know this is going to be a defensive type of matchup you're going to get more field goals I'm going to go for this type of a defense that's where the points should be that would be what I think I would you just do. shift the randomness then from the kicker spot to the defensive position yeah. which you can actually I, use I, skill on it, it's too new for me <laughs> I can't process it all. Couple years, couple but years. yeah, maybe maybe I'll come around to that idea. It's interesting. I think the NFL itself is trying to get rid of kickers. They're moving the extra points back to depress them. They stop. <laughs> they stop making. You know, the the kickoff's almost gone at this point. Your job is to just boot it out of the back of the end zone. You don't need to place it anywhere. I don't know. That it, that actually makes it harder to be a kicker. I would think in different ways, but you're not. You know strategically putting the ball where you should, you know, kick but it to I'm, one I'm guy. But I'm saying you've got to be able to be accurate with your field goals, and if you don't have the leg strength to kick a touchback nearly every single time, then that's a problem. You're for out the of team. the league. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. News and notes from around the league. And obviously we are going to reveal our kickers of the week. Yeah. That's an, <laughs> uh, No? No. Not a new segment? Not me. No. Hey, I, I, why I did, did I record the drop this morning? I did the Foot Clan a favor, <laughs> and this week was the first week because it's playoffs that I actually published kicker rankings. I don't know if you guys are aware. I, I haven't done that this year. I have. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware because I keep telling you to do it. Yeah. It's a boycott. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It is hyperbolic to say that there is a 1.4 difference. You want to know why? Because that does not reflect playing a matchup and a strategy with your kicker. That just reflects the top to the bottom as though we're all not streaming kickers. We're all streaming kickers matchup-wise. So there's still strategy to it. There's still teams like, you know, the Chiefs that average two and a half, you know, field goal attempts a game to a team that averages one. Fair. I'm going to win with a kicker this week. That's, that's fine. All right. Some news. Notes. The big news. The big, big, big news. The big depressing news from Jason. Mark Ingram, shoulder surgery. It came out, what is it, uh, torn rotator cuff. Injured reserve, ending the season, and there he goes. Wave Good, goodbye. Goodbye, Mark Wave goodbye Ingram. if you can. A lot, of, lot of questions out there as to who is the guy you pick up, who do you want. Um, I'm going to be following this, obviously, very closely through the week, <laughs> so you could check out my Twitter for different updates. As of this second, for me, I would prefer to have Hightower as the handcuff. We saw him used in that Kyrie Robinson role. And there's a lot of different reports coming out, right? So one is saying that there's going to be a three-headed committee. 
Now, that shouldn't be too scary because the truth is it has always been that three-headed. When Mark Ingram was there and Kyrie Robinson was healthy, you know, Mark, Mark Kyrie Robinson, I was frustrated as an Ingram owner. They used him a lot, and then C.J. Spiller still got, you know, a, a little bit in. There's uh, Nick Underhill. He covers uh, the Saints for the New Orleans Advocate. He said that uh, Sean Payton was talking about we get a chance to see more of Spiller. So that could be... <laughs> That could be exciting for Spiller owners. For me, <laughs> you've had a chance plenty of times. One of the biggest issues is they don't trust him in pass protection. So I'm not sure whether or not they're really going to let that fly. If you're in a PPR league, I would say, you know, maybe maybe you give a little bit of love Spiller's way. But for me, I'm leaning more towards high tower. It's like the, the one the Titans like, we got to uh, we're, we got to get David Cobb the ball. A little bit more like, okay, so mean, give him the ball. You mean when they talk about it in the kind of like, well, I sure hope that we have a way to see yeah, Spiller this like, week. There's just, I mean, we're the ones who control who gets the ball, but I'm just not sure we can figure it out. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, they have said this about Spiller several times this year. In they, his career. It, it, yeah, no, well, I'm no, saying Sean right. Payton this you. year has said, oh, we got to get that guy the ball more. Something hasn't quite worked there. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Darrell Revis is not practicing on Wednesday. Mike, do you expect him to play? I uh, it's a long shot. Whee! It's a long shot, and that's very unfortunate for the Jets, who are shaping up to be a very solid. It was the most selfish play. we I've ever done on the show. Yeah. Completely has nothing to do with other owners, just me, because I'm playing you, which is ridiculous. So, all right, the Raiders have signed Michael Crabtree to a four-year extension. Got paid. He got paid. Got paid. He played. He's been playing great, and now you kind of see kind of a trifecta between Carr and Cooper and Crabtree for you know. The three C's for the years to come. So, good for Michael Crabtree. It's good for the Raiders. Yeah, and I guess it, it also puts him into some dynasty keeper context for people that know where he'll be next year. And then next year, when Clive Walford breaks out... He might. You the, get the four C's. They just need three wait, more. How is the, that the four C's? Clive. Clive. Oh. Four C's. Yeah, you're good, at, you're good at letters. It's the four seasons. Four seasons? I just, I just took care of that. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. Matt Schaub expects to play Sunday. His mother is proud of him. Good, good for you, Matt Schaub. Crockett Gilmore did not practice on Wednesday. They, I don't know if there's are, confidence in Crockett Gilmore they're anymore. They're out of tight ends. They are out of players uh, in Baltimore. Baltimore, Brutal. this week they take on Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> um, the Seattle defense may <sighs> may just win you your, your week. Yeah. It's very, very possible. We got a bunch of other guys that didn't practice. Heath Miller didn't practice this week. CJ Anderson didn't practice. Ronnie Hillman didn't practice. Um, what do we think about those guys? Uh, I think Anderson's going to miss. Uh, the, it sounds as if Hillman will play, but absolutely watch that. If he suddenly doesn't practice on Thursday, you better find a different option. You better pick up Juwan Thompson, who I think is a, a, a solid pickup besides even if Hillman is to play. With with uh, expecting Anderson to miss, Robert Quinn season ending injured reserve not coming back to that Rams defense. They haven't been the same without him and Chris Long by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they hit our waiver wire yesterday, and I don't think they're going to land I, on any rosters. I kept holding on to him, thinking they were going to turn around, and then and then you see that news, and <laughs> yeah, all right, Tyler Eifert. We expect him to play in Week 14. That's good. That's it, big news. It's big big news for Andy Dalton that uh, you got to. Take a little hit to A.J. Green, unfortunately, because he was getting those nice red zone looks. And then what do we think about the platoon in the backfield right now for Andy Reid and the Chiefs, Spencer Ware, Charkandrick West? What are we expecting this week? Because a lot of people want to know, hey, most of the questions that I have is not, hey, do I start Spencer Ware? Right. It's more like, hey, can I? do I start Darren McFadden or do I start Charkandrick West against the Chargers? In that situation, I would start Darren McFadden for volume. I do think that West will pick up his... Uh, his percentage of the timeshare. He was just coming off that hamstring injury, which clearly was a, a somewhat nasty hamstring since he had to miss uh, essentially a game and a half with, with the injury. So I look for West to get more involved. Uh, Ware will still be a factor, uh, but if I'm choosing between the two of them, I'm going with West. All right, before we get into the fantasy forecast, we do want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's show that makes this show possible, and that is a new one. PokerStars.net. Let me tell you about them. You can go on and you can play online poker. It is easy to get started. You can play for free as long as you want. You start with a thousand chips. You can reload for free a couple of times every hour. And 
It is the biggest game in town. This is the largest poker site in the world. There are hundreds of tournaments every day, over 10,000 players online at any time, over 140 billion hands played today. Wow. That's a lot of hands. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and what's cool is it's easy to play while you're traveling because they have an app on your iPhone, iPad, Android devices. And this is the thing that really sticks out to me too and makes it a lot of fun. You can set up a club for you and your friends, i.e. maybe your fantasy league. It's easy and free to sign up and set up a private club for you and your friends and you just download the software. And when you do that, you click the home games button. It'll show you how to set up a private club for you and your friends. So Check it out, PokerStars.net. Sign up on PokerStars.net and get 1,000 play chips to get you started. Fantasy Forecast. All right. Thursday night football. Mm. You going to be there, Mike? I'm going to be there. I got my You got my your jersey on right now. Why don't you... On? Show that Superman to the YouTube. That? Show that Superman to the YouTubers. That? <sighs> Looks pretty good. That's right. Uh, and if, if you're wondering why I have number twelve, it's because it was a gift from the Arizona Cardinals to me. Is uh, that the twelfth man type yeah. of thing? And that, that's not a lie. They they gave this to me, and then I got to go on the field, and it was awesome. Very yeah, fun. Awesome. I remember that. I was pretty jealous. Uh, so let's let's talk about the game. I I'm gonna just. I, this is gonna sound like pure unadulterated homer the cardinals are going to destroy the vikings tonight there is nothing homer about that that is just speaking factually mike said it best on chat last night off off the air <laughs> about the minnesota vikings defense is uh going to miss this week <laughs> yes so they are missing their free safety their strong safety their nose tackle their best linebacker their best linebacker uh, we saw what happened with seattle who it, well seattle they have a a decent offense. The Seattle offense is not what they have in Arizona. And that was even on the road. Or Seattle was on the road. Minnesota got to be at home. It's It could be a blowout by halftime for Arizona if they decide to take the shots. Arizona is the number one scoring offense in football right now. Vegas has the game at almost a nine-point line in favor of the Cardinals at home. I just don't see. I think the question for fantasy owners as well, especially AP owners, is how in the world can Minnesota score enough points? Now, these things can flip because two big turnovers, you know, right. a, a pick six and a special teams play, and the game's going to be really close. But if things went to chalk, I think it's an advantage of the Cardinals to score a lot of points and just see if Bridgewater can do anything because last week we saw the Cardinals take on the Rams. They shut down Todd Gurley, and then they said, show me something else. And they couldn't. The Rams couldn't do that. Now, the Vikings are a much better team. I want to give them credit. They're a very good team. We're saying that they're very uh, hurt on the defensive exactly. side. And they haven't been scoring a lot of points. And you you saw a an exact recipe that Seattle, it just last week, this is how you shut down the Vikings because Teddy Bridgewater has been so disappointing. I mean, most teams that you already know stop Adrian Peterson and put some points on the board, and then the Vikings are just like a turtle flipped on their back. I mean, there's there's not much they can do at that point except wriggle wriggle around the, uh, just frantically. Well, they, Stephen Diggs has taken a huge step back since midseason. You get nothing out of the other receivers there right now. The no team, no team in football scores more a higher percentage of their touchdowns on the ground than the Vikings do, which is a reliance on AP. We expect that. But if so, what do you do with Adrian Peterson? Is the question. I mean, I know you're you're starting him. I mean, I guess. you have you have to start him, and you have to hope that he gets involved in the passing game more than he has been. Those little dump offs have killed the Cardinals. I I could see a situation where you know the Adrian Peterson starts grabbing those. You know, when Mark Ingram played early in the year, th that type of a of a back, a big bruising back, catching the ball in a little bit of the open field. I think that's what they are going right. to need to do. Now, whether they do it, that's what you hope for in Adrian Peterson. Andy, you and I have him ranked as, as a top 10 back because he's Adrian Peterson. Mike, you've got him. You got a lot of shade. You got yeah, him in 23. I, just, I think that now Adrian Peterson went full squeaky wheel last week complaining as he does when he doesn't get his touches. So I, I don't think that it will be a situation the same as last week. They're going to force him the ball early. Early, yeah, exactly. Early and try and get him going. It just because of the way I see the game flow going, Adrian Peterson could be in big trouble. Guys that I would uh, like to start over Adrian Peterson. Now, I agree with you guys. It's really hard in your fantasy playoffs to sit down your stud. There's kind of that, that rule of thumb. You never sit your studs. 
But man, this is this is a a problematic situation. But guys, I like more than Peterson, Yeldon, Darren McFadden, uh, the big salad. We're going to talk about the big salad, Sean Drone later. Now, do I have the courage? That's what I was going to inside of you. me to play Drone over Peterson. I don't know. <laughs> Thankfully, it's I'm funny not, to hear them in a sentence like that. I don't have. I'd, I'd luckily don't have that situation staring me in the face. So here's here's what I think a fantasy owner needs to do if you're an Adrian Peterson owner, because I think 95 percent of them, no matter what statistics we throw, including myself, is playing Adrian Peterson. But here's what that means for your team, depending on your matchup. You might need to take some upside risks other places. You might not be able to rely on 20 points from Adrian Peterson or 15 points like you've gotten in the past. You might have to accept the fact he could give you an AP game in spite of the matchup, or he could give me eight. And then I need to make that up somewhere. I need the potential to make it up. That's how I look at it. If I was in that situation where I'm picking a middle-of-the-road wide receiver or Devontae Parker, I'm playing Devontae Parker in that situation for the potential on Monday night. Well, luckily, it's it's a Thursday night, so the Adrian Peterson owners get to see yep, right that's away. Right. It's, you're not, right. it's not Sunday night football where you're like, oh, what if this happens? You get to see it happen and then adjust accordingly. And, th- and this is another public service announcement. We've said it before, but this is the playoff week. There are some flex type of players that you're going to put in uh, on tonight's game, like Michael Floyd or Doug John Baldwin. Brown. Uh, oh, tonight's game. T- said, tonight's sorry, game. Yeah. Get them out of your flex spot and into yes. your wide receiver spot. I just want to say that before we move from this game. Don't start Thursday night players in your flex if you can avoid it. It just gives you more flexibility yep. if they're going to be starting. And so, other side of the ball, you're starting Palmer. Yes. yeah. You're starting David Johnson. Absolutely. At, yes. 25 t- 24 touches last week. On pay, he should do the same thing. Andre Ellington has been ruled out. Has he? He's out. Last I heard, they were expecting him. He is ruled out. They expect him in week 15. That is the new report. So David Johnson, take the rock. Minnesota's 22nd against the run. Uh, They're going to be trying to stop Palmer in that offense. That's the beautiful thing about David Johnson is the defenses he's going to face mixed with some some talent. Uh, What do we expect from Larry Fitzgerald, John Brown, Michael Floyd against the sixth best passing defense. Well, Larry Fitzgerald, well, the, they're part of them being the best passing defense is Harrison Smith, and he's out. Uh, it's, that's the problem with the Vikings. Everybody is out. Fitzgerald over the last three weeks has gotten more targets than any other wide receiver in football. Uh, I love Fitzgerald. He hasn't uh, gotten in the end zone. They're at home. Uh, in, if just for Cardinals offense. Fitzgerald, Floyd, Brown, if I can find a way to get them in, I'm playing everybody. Okay. It's always hard to predict who's going to be the guy. Yeah, but, but just, there's yeah. the potential for a huge game for any of the receivers is is there. All right. The Buffalo Bills travel to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles in a revenge game for LaShawn McCoy. <laughs> the language and discuss, the words coming out, I mean. He is. Uh, I love that. He the, was upset. He's so funny because he says all these things about, you know, Chip Kelly, I ain't going to say blank to him. Right. Well, I'm not shaking his hand. And then he and then he goes, but yeah, I'm not upset with him in any way. I have no hate or anger towards him. I just got nothing to say to him. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So what, the, here's the thing. Does that mean that McCoy has more upside because of the revenge game? I mean, are, are the Eagles are Chip, if there's... Bad blood? Did the Eagles really try to stop LeSean McCoy? The revenge, I mean, what a- revenge game is usually a silly narrative to me. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm buying in this week, though. <laughs> I'm buying it completely. That Jason might not be. That the Bills are... the. I expect the Bills to, to really give an F, concerted effort to get LeSean McCoy in the end zone this week. Now, if not Carl- multiple times. Carlos Williams is very unlikely to play. He didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, he missed last week. His arm's been in a sling most of the week. Do we expect him? Probably not. No. And so this will be the LaShawn McCoy show. I don't I don't know what we saw from the special teams in Eagles defense last week. I, I it's still one of those things where your brain doesn't process it. Like nobody like on earth started the Eagles defense against New England and they were by far the best of the week. Uh so McCoy's on the field. Yes. <laughs> what What else do we see from I mean, Taylor, I love Taylor this week. I love Tyrod Taylor, and I love Sammy Watkins. Uh, Sammy Watkins is officially heating up with back-to-back 100-yard games. Uh, I just think that the Eagles secondary is exploitable, and uh, like you said, there was just freak plays in that Philadelphia game 
Uh, they basically, I think they they went for the cycle. I mean, right? You had a pick six. You had a punt, punt return, return for a touchdown. Block, just, uh, blocked punt for a touchdown. Just yeah. any kind of of uh, huge play. Uh, the the Eagles picked it up. I don't expect uh, all three of those things to happen again. I don't know about you guys, but I don't th- I don't think Unlikely, they're going to bust out they all have, three again. They have been a big play defense. Yeah, so would, there is that. Would you play the Eagles defense this week against the Bills, Mike? Uh, there's there's always upside with the Eagles uh, defense, but there is a very low floor. And Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, it's called five touchdowns in, and, and, in two of five weeks or four weeks. Tyrod Taylor is just not turning the ball over. Uh, so you just you and for sacks. I mean, Taylor's an elusive guy. I just don't think this is a matchup. Even what they did against New England at home with Philadelphia. I just I'm not I'm not doing it. Now the other side of the ball. I was just about to ask you, Jason. Yeah. What do you do? And we've got a lot of questions this week. What do you do? If push comes to shove, I have talked to people who have all three backs on their team. Matthews, Murray, Sproles. Who do you start this week? I know my answer. I want to hear from you. If you have to start one of those three guys, then if it was me and I had to make the decision, I would put in DeMarco Murray. I think DeMarco Murray went, uh, (laughs) you know. Squeaky wheel as well. He went beyond squeaky wheel. He went... uh, all the way to the top. top well, now t- there's there's differing reports on it that maybe he just sat, sat by next him to plane. him on the airplane. I don't, it, this is a bunch of... Well, of, re- uh, regardless, yeah. you know, I think he is still involved. You just... It, it's a risk. I, I like Ryan Matthews this week. I don't have a problem, you know, having Ryan Matthews as a, as a flex player, um, even, even in the playoffs. But you have a higher likelihood that that the majority of carries is going to go to DeMarco Murray. That's what I think, and so that's who I would play. Who who was your guy, Andy? It was DeMarco Murray. Because the uh, there's no way to know the level of carries the other guys are going to get. At least Murray represents upside if he is listened to. You know, he, he's supposed to be a part of this offense. There's been a problem getting him the ball at times during the year. I think what made it look bad this time is because they won the game. They won the game, so he looks more like more of a complainer. Nobody's saying that about AP every time he doesn't get the ball. I'm going to take the risk, right? Like, I don't want to start any of them. But if I have to, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people say, okay, is it Woodhead or is it DeMarco Murray? Is it, you know, some lower end? Uh, is it, you know, Spencer Ware or DeMarco Murray? Right. Yeah, so, and I, I mean, I would just, take, I don't know. And in that I case, mean, I would go DeMarco Murray. But there's a lot of guys that I would take over DeMarco Murray this week. Um, according to our rankings, we have many. We've got Javorius Allen, who's going up against Seattle, that we would start ahead of uh, Demarco Murray. We have uh, Latavius Murray ahead of Demarco Murray. Wow, yeah, and we've got a against, lot. Yeah, yeah, in a bad matchup. So I mean, <clears throat> you know, if you have other options that you've picked up, you know, Sean Drone. Oh, the big salad. You know, if you've got Sean Drone and Javoris Allen because you've been listening to the show and you've you know been finding waiver wire gold, those guys I would play over so to Marco Murray. We were talking about Ooh, breaking news. Darrell Revis is practicing. I saw it on Thursday. I saw it. Uh, he's in the red jersey. He's in the no contact jersey. So at least he's on the field. Fantastic news for the Jets. Uh, so Sorry. we were we were talking about the situation. Do I have the courage to play? The big salad over Adrian Peterson. I don't know. Over DeMarco Murray? Absolutely. If I'm looking at that situation, Drone is in for me. It's I'm not even thinking about it. All right, and we said we like Watkins a lot. Ertz started last week. Is he a uh, Ertz or Clay in this matchup? Ooh. Uh, I would take Ertz over Clay. Clay has just so disappeared in so many games. He, he had a big game last game. He disappeared they, last week, too, in, in the coverage <laughs> yeah. because the, the defense did not see he him. A, he had an invisibility cloak <laughs> for the first 20 yards of his run, and then he took it off and said, pass me the ball. Um, yeah, That's a huge advantage in football. Real real good idea to keep that invisibility cloak with you on the field. Uh, I, I believe that Zach Ertz will get more targets, more catches. The real question here is who gets in the red zone. I would say it's about the same odds of either guy getting – getting in uh, for the score, but I would rather play Ertz over Selk, especially because the Eagles, while the Eagles have given up a lot through the air, we've said this in the last couple weeks, they haven't given up much to the tight end position. So I'm not on Charles Clay this week. All right, we're moving on to the next matchup, and if there was ever a nine-point underdog that I thought would lose by 
Double that. It would be the Baltimore Ravens oh, right now. Man, poor Baltimore. Seattle heads into Baltimore. Seattle is white hot right now, and the Ravens are not. They lost a game that it seemed like neither team won last week to Miami. Matt Schaub's banged up. Over under on pick sixes, it's one and a half. Are you taking the over or the under? I'll take the under. <laughs> You're gonna uh, take. The I'll take the solid one. <laughs> but I will uh, say this: I might go over. <laughs> this is the type of ridiculous game that will humble you as an NFL watcher somehow. Where uh, Seattle's gonna win it, but it won't be as big of a blowout or something. Just mm. not to the point of me clicking that little up, almost upset button. But I, you know, sometimes there's these games, and you, all right, I'm I'm lying. Yeah, there's it's gonna be a whooping. no. This this one, I'm putting the house on Seattle. <laughs> I have Russell Wilson extremely high. I. Don't have the rankings up at this second. Uh, I think I have them in my top three this week. That's I don't have Makes a problem sense. with this it. is a, a a beatable defense. He is not, you know, heating up. He is in fuego. Mike, Mike, you have Wilson at four. I have him at three. Jason has him at three. In fuego. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's let's uh, move through the obvious. Thomas Rawls starting. Buck Allen is he's a two, but he's he's starting. For all of us, I, I assume, right? I, um, is there any situation yeah. where you would sit Buck Allen? Honestly, you're... I you're, would sit Buck Allen because signing Buck Allen meant that he was an addition to my roster, and so there are a lot of... Not if you were a Justin Forsett owner. No, you're, you're right. I have, a, I have him at 17. Playoffs. I have him yeah. at 17. So that that so, like yes, a play. Because it, I think he's just going to catch enough passes. I mean, they're going to do... Who else can they give the ball to? Yeah, and that's the You can't the throw it. Well, but there's a lot of playoff team. I mean, this is playoffs, so you've got good rosters. You know, it, you could have a, a Frank Gore, Darren McFadden, yes, Lamar Miller, yes. TJ Yeldon. Those guys, I would play over. Eddie Lacy or Javoris Allen? Buck Allen, just... Be, oh. I, I think I, I go Eddie Lacy on that. Yeah, I, I might go Eddie Lacy. That's that's a very Jeremy tough Hill or Javoris Allen? Javoris Allen. I, I don't like Jeremy Hill. It depends on the scoring format. I'll say that for sure. Based it, on the scoring format, you have them back-to-back. -back. You have Hill one ahead. Well, there you so, go. You got him real close. That settles that. All right. Listen to this. After starting the season as a bonus matchup, the Ravens have allowed the second fewest passing yards to opposing quarterbacks over the last three weeks. Does it matter in any way, shape, or form to Russell Wilson and Doug Baldwin? I think we've said no. No, and right. we'll talk more about Doug Baldwin uh, later. We're going to save, save that? Might or – well, we can talk about it now and, if you want. Uh, well, no, we'll, 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 we'll save it. We'll get to it in the uh, Tyler Lockett. Of the week section. Tyler Lockett, what do you guys think about him on this week? Because I kind of like him. Tyler Lockett, I do like because I, I said this before the show. I, I really like Doug Baldwin. We're going to talk about him. But th there's always a, a return to the mean in terms of averaging 45 touchdowns a year where he <laughs> where he's at over the last two games, whatever it is. So Lockett's somebody who, if you were watching third downs last week, it was like, okay, it's it's third and nine. And then the next play, it was Lockett for nine yards for a first down. It was, you know, he, he was a go-to guy. Wilson loves him. He has the big playability. Lockett could put up one of the Baldwin performances this week, for all we know. So I, I don't mind rolling the dice with him, but he's down the list for me. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He, he's somebody I'm starting over Pierre Garçon, not somebody I'm starting over Deshaun Jackson. Okay, what about Lockett versus Aiken? I would rather have... I'd rather have Aiken. I would really? rather have Lockett. Wow. How much would you rather oh. have Lockett? Not, no, no. <laughs> Water bed. Whoa! It's, hold your horses there. Too late. I will be honest. I didn't mean to push the button. <laughs> My finger was over the button, but it seems like destiny may have us aligned uh, here. I not that much. Not enough Dang to. It. Not right. enough to put water. Unofficial bed. water bed. Yeah, unofficial pride. Oh, bed. you bunch of weenies! All right. Now speaking to the Buck Allen side of things, we think his production is going to come through the air. Yeah. Well, a guy who got twelve catches last week. I'm not expecting 12. I'm secretly hoping for 12 or more. Uh, but he, five, five to six is what, what, seems like a lock. <laughs> 12 puts him at about 200 a year pace. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna temper that. Uh, but yeah, they're not giving five, it up on the ground. Third, five or six. Five or six is fine, yeah. and that will be pretty good for you. Yes, that, well, that, uh, that's I'd great. start him over Woodhead for sure. All right, 49ers. Another start of the week in this game. 49ers at the Browns. Blaine Gabbert coming off the hot win at Chicago. This is a team that has impressed me in terms of fighting through a lot of uh, tumult, right? And you're got, speaking, just to be clear, of the 49ers side of this I'm game. I am speaking of not, the 49ers side. Not the Cleveland no. side. <laughs> no. 
No, that's a different kind of fighting going on in Cleveland. But the 49ers, their defense has kept games competitive for them, even though it's not been a good defense in terms of total yards given up. They found ways to keep games competitive. They beat Chicago in Chicago. They kept it close in Arizona. Blaine Gabbert had, uh, I think, 6,000 yards on the ground last week. Uh, at least uh, half on that one run. So he he's not somebody I'm starting, Blaine Gabbert, but he's two, impressed me a little bit. In a two-quarterback league, I think he's, you know... In, because in, the matchup is so good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then our... Uh, you want to talk about the running backs? Oh, my goodness. We're finally to the time. The big salad. Sean Drone. Eat Listen, your veggies, everybody. You got to get that foundation of greens and carrots in your diet. And Sean Drone is the man to do that for your fantasy football team. The guy is just, he's on the field almost 100% of the time. That's, that's what you want out of volume. You talk about, oh, I got this timeshare back. He's on the field 60% of the time. Could I interest you in hundred percent in ninety plus? Yeah, in in a matchup against the second worst running defense in the league, a guy who catches five passes a week. He's I mean, and he has the added bonus of when you beat your opponent, they look at you and they go, "I lost to Sean Drone." Oh yeah, that's that that's a that's a lettuce slap in the face. <laughs> that's exactly. I what challenge it is. you to a, a duel. Health off. So uh, he's had. 13 carries, he got a touchdown last week, another five catches through the air, and this is a game that we think the San Francisco defense can kind of keep it low scoring and let let Drone run. Absolutely. And if it, an interesting thing for the 49ers defense, they're getting gashed on the ground. Uh, I don't know if people realize this. 165 yards, almost two touchdowns the last three weeks. Do you have it within your soul Within your foundation to go to the crow. No. I have him as my thirty third ranked. Ooh, here's what here's here's what high. happened. <laughs> I know, it is high. <laughs> I was looking at this when I was statting these guys out, and I had that that question <laughs> speak in my heart. I was like, man, if they gave Crowell the ball in this game and dedicated to running with their power back, Crowell would have a great game. And I thought, you know, he's gonna get some Decent runs here, and I statted him out, and then I went, how high am I on him? And I looked, and I'm 30, 33rd, which means if you're in a playoff team, you probably have guys ahead of him. He did I have would... 11 carries last week. Yeah, yeah. he's got – he has double-digit carries in all but three three weeks. So, yeah, so uh, – I'm I'm not excited. I'm not excited either, but in a, in a it pinch – It could happen. Well, the Browns are dead last in the league in rushing yards per game average. I think it's around 70 a game for them. So, it could happen. Just yeah, but It could happen. But I can't see now. I'd start Duke Johnson over Crow. Yeah, yeah. So um, we talked about Brian Hartline earlier in the waiver show, who's just been averaging a ton of targets. But he now has we eight, uh, eight catches in two straight weeks. But now you got Johnny Manziel in there. I, you know, you just don't know where he leans. Is this going to be? We've been worried about Barnage in the past with Manziel. We've been worried about uh, just the production at the position in terms of total yards. This game. You know, the over-under, despite the fact these teams are dead last in the league in defense pretty much on both sides of the ball, the over-under is only 40 points. So we're counting on, Vegas is counting on inefficiency on the offense more than it is a shootout between bad defenses and, and offenses. So what about temporary. Uh, what about Benji? I'm looking up his status. He did not practice. Travis Benjamin did not practice on Wednesday. So it's unclear if, uh, if he's going to play. If he sits out, then Hartline yeah. certainly gets a target bump. All right, we got a couple more games to preview before we get to the starts of the week. Let's go and talk about the Redskins facing the Chicago Bears. This game has the potential for some rain. Cousins, Cutler, uh, who who's worth talking about in this matchup right now? I don't think we're starting either of those guys. They're not really ideal streamers this week. Uh, Cutler's not. I guess Cutler's not bad. Cutler's not bad in my opinion. I was I was set up to play Cutler back-to-back -back weeks, uh, uh, but he just shot my confidence in the face last, last week, week yeah. with, with a great matchup at home. And and, and uh, the saying on the show, whatever happens can happen in reverse. Cutler could absolutely come out and throw three touchdowns. He still has Alshon Jeffrey. Eddie Royal is back at practice. That is a boost to the offense. Forte is rolling. So these things can happen. Uh, for Cutler's fantasy production last week, is the touchdowns went to the running backs on because they got uh, goal line carries. 
those could easily, you know, game flow into Jay Cutler's pocket. And you put up 200 yards and two touchdowns last week, and people are, have zero problem playing Cutler in the first week of the playoffs. Is Zach Miller a sneaky start now that Martell has been and is gone? Yeah. See, he's not a terrible option. I'll, I'll say that. Okay. It's, I, I don't have a ton of confidence in it. I don't know about you guys. Deshaun though. Jackson is a wide receiver what this week? The, the, <laughs> he's a the wide Bears receiver. defense is pretty good. He, I think he's a wide receiver too. This is a matchup where he, he's got three weeks in a row of having a solid game. I think you've got to ride Deshaun Jackson's coattails right now. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. I like him. You know who else I like in this game? I'm going to throw a name out there that Uh-oh. I actually like. Uh-oh. Matt Jones. Oh! Matt Jones is a guy, to me, when I was watching the last game, that they want to give the ball to more and more. I don't they, know if I should tell you where you have him ranked. I know where I have him ranked. I don't like it. I think the, I think the public demands that we hear where it is. Cause well, I, you want to take I, a guess, Mike? N- no, no. It, he needs to move down from where I have him. <laughs> He needs to move down from the number 13 spot. Yeah. No, obviously. He needs to move down there. But I will say this. That was my head the, exploding. The, America. America, call the call 911. The question. Is my head. Is, let, let, let me explain, by the way, why that happens. I mean, Jason is very rigid on statistically analyzing the players with no mind of where they actually <laughs> no i'm not saying that as an insult really what i it no no listen to the like, sentence okay i said with no mind to where they end up ma- in a list okay yes. rankings. he doesn't care about the number of where they end up he finishes the statistics then he comes back and looks at those numbers balances it out a little bit and so guys move a little bit but he's just looking at the matchup and it, it just goes to support your ridiculous story here Look, yeah. I, I don't hate Matt Jones at all. I, I do kind of like him. I am uh, a 37. Uh, and, and I feel like that's just As about a right. very high end, too, that's, that's stretching. And just because of the volatility that comes with Matt Jones, uh, we the backfield has, Fumbles. E- exactly. That's a, part, that's a part of it. But Matt Jones has been the majority ball carrier uh, f- to double up on majority. But most of the games this season, Matt Jones has been the primary ball carrier where, uh, but the problem is Alfred Morris jumps in every once in a while. It sure looked like Alfred Morris got benched on Monday night after he starting the game, had a couple carries, and then was just gone. Alfred Morris didn't see the field. It was Matt Jones and Chris Thompson, and uh, so I. So realistically, though, let me give you some names because this is just worthless to fantasy owners to say he has him at thirteen. I got him at thirty-seven, right? And we kind of like him. Legarrette Blunt or Matt Jones? Uh, Blunt. I'm gonna go. I'm Not gonna go Matt Jones. Ryan Matthews or Matt Jones? I'm gonna go Matt Jones. It depends on the practice reports. I, I would probably sure. go Matt Jones in that situation. Spencer Ware or Matt Jones? Where? Matt Jones. Uh, Demarco Murray or Matt Jones? Demarco Murray. Yeah, that that'd go Murray there. And just a little bit of so an MRI revealed a tear in in Chris Thompson. In in so in, in his, his body, in his body. In, in, well, yes. In, Chris in, Thompson has been torn in two. It's right across the middle in his shoulder. That's the worst place to get torn <laughs> in his shoulder. So that's the pass, big, that's important. The pass catching role is clearly not going to be Alfred Morris. We saw hey, Matt that Jones can, with eight he can get two a week with yeah with eighteen carries last game. And so the question all year has been, who's the guy going to be? Who is it? Because some weeks it's Alfred Morris, some weeks it's Matt Jones, some weeks it's Chris Thompson. Well, if Chris Thompson isn't able to be in there, and we saw last week an 18-6 to six carry threshold from uh, Alfred to uh, Matt Jones, I, I think it's a matchup that's winnable. So I like that take. I hadn't heard the Thompson news yet. And if you took Chris Thompson's stats and you just plop, you plop them into to, uh, Jones, jo- oh, it's, he's a, then I like him. He's a two. So that's, that's, a, that's a good hot take. Steaming. There you go. All right. Can we move on? Yes, please. All right. The Steelers and the Bengals. This is a uh, an exciting game. We got the news earlier about Eifert expected to play in this game. The run defenses are good for both teams. I know some people are pretty down on D'Angelo Williams this week. Uh, silly. But I am not. I'm I was going to say, I am not. What is the big storyline in this game for you? Uh, the big storyline in it is uh, that the, the Bengals defense, which is a very strong defense, are likely to be without their top two cornerbacks. That's the story to me. 
Uh, I'm still hearing Adam Jones might play. Uh, I've heard he's on. I, I've been sending him some medicinals <laughs> and some uh, vitamins because my opponent, Mike Wright, has Antonio Brown. And so I am really. And then I searched for Adam Jones online. And, and what's it and here is the headline. Adam Jones in a cast. Yep. <laughs> Colon Eifert returns. Uh, he's sure there's there is the slim chance that Adam Jones plays, but he is on the doubtful side. Uh, it's so, uh, and they're just, the Bengals have been decimated at the cornerback position. Uh, they lost Denard earlier in the season and Kirk Patrick has been not, not great. Uh, it, it, you, so you take out the top two corners from the Bengals this week. It's trouble. And big Ben trouble is going to go bonanzas. Trouble, uh, pe- trouble. people that they're, they're, they're looking back, you know, cause you like to have some context. What did they do earlier in the season? Well, the Steelers, and the Bengals, uh, Big Ben got kind of held in check. Reminder, Big Ben was coming off of his MCL injury early when he came into that Bengals game. That was his first game back. And we know that he looked physically wrong. Uh, <laughs> that's a strange phrase. Like a tear? <laughs> like he has a tear in him? He did. He was not moving around nimbly at physically all. Physically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Uh, but but he, he's healthy now. That Steelers offense, it cannot be stopped by anybody. You take out your best two cornerbacks and Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, and even Marcus Wheaton. It looks like Heath Miller's going to miss, so that puts a bump up to Wheaton, if you can imagine that. I think all three guys are strong place. They're going to need to lean on the 12th man in Cincinnati this week. <laughs> They're going to need a 13th and a 14th man in Cincinnati. <sighs> All but right. I, but I, I think this is a big help also for Dolphins. I Fantasy. should remind people, the Bengals are favored to win this game. There's no problem with that. There's so many offensive weapons on both sides of the ball. The first time they played, we were expecting this huge game, and it ended 10-16. to 16. That's not happening this time around with these injuries for the Bengals. And I think that once one team starts, right, it, as soon as one team finally gets you know what's fourteen the, the, points on the, the board. seal is broken. Is it is it okay for me to make this my upset? Uh, for the Steelers, yeah, sure. Andy's almost upset of the week because I would say the Steelers are going to win this game. That would make it an upset according to the line yeah, well, I, I by think three points. Win. Like it's not even a pick 'em. So, all right, that. Uh, we said D'Angelo Williams is still in our, for me and Mike, he's a one. For Jason, he's just outside that one, according to the rankings. So he's starting. I do want to debate the Bernard Hill situation a okay. little bit because I don't want to move on too fast there. I'm of the belief, possibly incorrectly, that I'm not going to overread into Hill's total carry numbers last week against the Cleveland defense where obviously they were running the clock out. I think the likelihood based on the upset prediction and based on the, the fact that the Steelers are a buzzsaw in offense right now, that Bernard has the likelihood of being on the field more often than Jeremy Hill does. Therefore, I don't love Jeremy Hill this week. I, yeah, I, I can buy into that. I, I would still flex Hill, though. I, okay. I just, but it, you won't in our league over Danny Amendola. No, not over Amendola, no. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and move on. Starts of the week. All right, it's time for our starts of the week. It's playoff time. And if you have made it to your playoffs streaming, guys, this section right now, we're going to deliver the goods. The goodie, That's a promise. The goodie That's goods. That's a promise. All right, so let's kick it off with Mike. Give me your quarterback. So my quarterback, start of the week. My quarterback start of the week, a little lower end guy. Uh, He's going with Brian Hoyer. Uh, the Patriots have allowed five touchdowns to quarterbacks the last two weeks, uh, and we saw the the Texans were involved in a higher scoring game with the Bills last week. We got the Patriots coming in. I think the game flow uh, could favor in in for Hoyer's fantasy production because the Pats can still put up points. I know they're depleted in with their offensive weapons, but it's still Tom Brady, and he can still get it done. Uh, so I just I think. If you're looking at game flow, and Hoyer has been great. He has been great all year. He Now he hasn't put up uh, just monster game-winning weeks, but he has also never crapped your team unless he gets knocked out of the game by an injury. So he's just I think he's a strong 
start if you are uh, if your quarterback is in a bad position. Like let's say you're a uh, Derek Carr owner who's going up against Denver. The streamer guys that we talked about weren't available, but Hoyer's on your your wire. I would play Hoyer over Derek Carr this week. Also, it looks like Demarcus Ware is going to be back in, for Denver. Oh, that's, so, that's, that's pleasant news for Derek Carr. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a Derek Carr owner, go go get Brian Hoyer. Or here's another guy you can go get. Absolutely. Tyrod Taylor. This guy has not thrown for 300 yards once. Not once. So why start him? Because he's the most efficient fantasy quarterback in the league right now per pass. He has four different games with three or more touchdowns, and he runs the ball. That They have really used him on the ground. He has several games over 40 yards. He has a game over 70 yards on the ground. He scored three touchdowns on the ground. And you've got a match up here with Philadelphia who's been giving up a lot of of passing touchdowns. So you've got a good matchup, a guy who's had big blow-up games, and this is the type of blow-up potential that you see. Now, Tyrod Taylor has crapped the team, so he's a little bit more risky to me. Uh, you know, if if they run the ball in with... Uh, Shady McCoy. With Shady, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and the touchdowns end up going that way in the revenge game, then you've got... If, but this is the guy, like, if you're a lower seed and you're facing a big juggernaut, Tyrod Taylor can explode. Yes. Oh, I, I, he was my number one priority to keep him away from Mike in our league in terms of a streamer. He's my start of the week as well. He was my stream of the week. Uh, Jason pretty much summed up the entire scenario, but I'll just add the fact that his not only has he had blow-up games, his last two weeks have been very good games, 30 and 39 in our scoring uh, six-point-per-touchdown league. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my running back, and I'm going to name him the Lonely Bronco. <laughs> if we have one... Of C.J. Anderson or Ronnie Hillman as the lonely starter, I think you start him with extreme joy against an Oakland Raiders defense that is giving it up to the running back position. My gut tells me C.J. will sit and Hillman will be active and yes, Juwan Thompson will get work, but last week it was like five or six carries and Ronnie Hillman, I think if he's healthy, can give you a really surprising, nice fantasy game Jason just mentioned DeMarcus Ware's back. The defense is outstanding. This game, if you had to predict the script, it's a couple scores, 17-3, to game over, run the ball, 24-3, to something like that. Let's say, uh, let's check your confidence in this sure. matchup. Sure, Hillman's out, Anderson's out. You've got Jawan Thompson. Yeah, as, the lonely you, Bronco starts. I love it. Yep. The lonely Bronco, that's great. I'm going with a guy who is our consensus number three running back. And normally you're like, Wait, well, of course you start him. But there are a lot of people who are really scared to start this guy. He was my Not me. start Not of the me. week. Not me. He was my start of the week last week. And he's my start of the week this week. It's David Johnson. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> David Johnson, people are – we talked about it already, so I don't need to regurgitate, but the Vikings are not the Vikings defense right now. And people see, okay, he's had one good week, and he's going up against a bad matchup. But no, he's not. No, he is not. And he got the ball 24 times. He's going to get it again this week. Start him over anyone. There is, If you David Johnson's on your team, he is starting. David Johnson, that's a, that's a, Adrian a, Peterson. David Johnson. Okay. Yeah. And David Johnson or... I agree. I'm just, I'm just doing a heat check. Yeah. D'Angelo Williams. David Johnson. Who do we have? Todd Gurley. Who do David yeah, Johnson? David Johnson. David Johnson or Sean McCoy. David Johnson. What? Wow. Here's what I love. I love that David Johnson such a storyline at the end of this year. It is a delight. It worked because it, he was it, it such a storyline in the beginning. It's just. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andre Ellington. I'm sorry, Chris Johnson. But this is very nice, and he offers so much upside. He's just a, a game breaking type of player. All right, my running back start of the week. Uh, I've mentioned his name quite a few times. Actually, you've not mentioned his name enough. I've you've mentioned his nickname quite a few times. Sean Drun, the big salad. Uh, Cleveland, four, four of 12 games for Cleveland. Only four of 12 games. They have not given up over 100 yards on the ground. Uh, and Drone has 18 catches in the last three weeks. We said Cleveland is the one of the absolute worst uh, rushing defenses in the league. And a guy who's on the field 90 to 100% of the time, 
So Sean Drone is my man, and I love it. I love it. All right, give me your wide receiver, even right. though I uh, Andy disagrees with my with my wide receiver. No, I don't disagree with the start. Well, so my start of the week, I'm going with Larry Fitzgerald. And the reason why I put him as my start of the week is because if you go over to fantasypros.com, he's number 14. He's number 14. They got uh, lots of guys starting. Ah! (laughs) What was that? 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 Uh, that uh, That was me taking a risk. At uh, finding a nice sound effect that said, duh, but that one was oh. terrifying, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm scared, <laughs> and I peed myself. The, okay, well, duh. But, but, but here's the deal for Larry Fitzgerald. Like I said, uh, uh, 53 targets over the last three weeks. That's the top of the NFL. The Vikings are depleted of defensive playmakers. Right now, of my wide receivers, I have Larry Fitzgerald ranked number four. And that's why it went with my start of the week because he is a wide receiver too on fantasy. The pros. only argument, that's what I was going to say. The argument that you are making to keep him as your start of the week as opposed to the obvious is just the fact that there are other resources out there telling people that he's a two that you should start other guys over. Yes. And therefore, I will allow it. Thank you. Even let though me, I play that sound Let effect. me go with a far better start. This is my favorite. This is my favorite guy right now to talk about <laughs> he's my favorite guy he's my favorite guy it's let me teammate. let me ask you guys a question i know you know the answer so let me ask the <laughs> foot clan a question since the week nine buys since week 10 11 12 13 the last four games who is the number one wide receiver in the entire nfl is it jerry rice is it is it jerry rice we're talking fantasy wise fantasy <laughs> okay. receiver Fan- is it is it deandre hopkins Nope. Is it Antonio Brown? No. Is it Brandon Marshall or no Allen Robinson? No I, I, well, those guys are all great, but the number one guy is Doug Baldwin. The number one guy is available in 33% of ESPN <laughs> leagues on waivers, and the number one guy is playing the Baltimore Ravens this week. Now, look, I don't expect Doug Baldwin to keep up a pace of this and finish the year as the number one wide receiver, but I'm playing Doug Baldwin this week over most guys. Stay in the flames. He is beyond on fire. Over his last four games, he is averaging six receptions, 108 yards, and one and a half touchdowns a week. That's pretty good. And that was coming off a of bye week. So that pretty good. There, was, there was a change in the offense that came out after week nine where the, you saw the aerial attack start. And then you have Jimmy Graham go down. There are factors that say this can... This can be a number one target. Well, you can trace it. Uh, and we said this yesterday. You can trace that back to Russell Wilson standing in the pocket and throwing the football. Yeah. So I mean, you're five touchdowns for Russell Wilson last week. Jason, you're telling me that Doug Baldwin, he's your number one guy. <laughs> yes. He, yeah. Jason is very, he wrote so many of his notes in capital letters around Doug Baldwin <laughs> that you know he was confident in this. And Foot Clan. If you got that reference, you got to tag that one. Yeah, oh, I that got, one's of course. Obs- no, you can't. We're not spoiling it, but that one was. Yeah, sometimes that's a that's a lower level yeah. reference that people will get. Yeah, all right. I think and a if, lot of people. And my get my wide receiver start of the week, if you want to get nuts, is Devonte <laughs> Parker. <laughs> Devonte Parker this is getting nuts for against sure. Against the Giants on Monday Night Football, the Giants are just horrible against the pass. Listen, in 83% of the games this year, they've given up 250-plus to the quarterback position, and Devontae Parker's on the other end of that equation. Now, yes, Ryan Tannehill threw for eight, eight <laughs> yards last week, but Devontae Parker had a huge touchdown catch. He's getting involved in the offense. The target numbers are starting to get there. Rashard Matthews is still out. And I just, I really like Devontae Parker. Not enough to where I'm benching Chris Ivory in my league of record and playing Devontae Parker over him. But he made me think about it because I just love the upside of a big, giant wide receiver who is known. I mean, I think his his yardage at the catch this year is something like 17 and a half yards at the catch. He's just a big play receiver. Your prototypical first round superstar potential wide receiver. And why not give him the ball right now? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a high risk, higher reward guy. He's going to do well. It's, you know what? Stinks you know, you know what? You have to play Julio, and Julio is like his ceiling seems so small right now because of the beaches of Normandy. 
Yeah, because of the beaches in Norway. I, mean, I like that. I stole that. Here's what I hope from, <laughs> just to give context. <laughs> Who'd you steal from? Give, it give was credit. actually from a radio caller that I have no idea what their name was. Oh, all right. So, well, here's what if I was you're say, out though, there, Julio, the reason I hope for Julio this week is that the that he gets like two red zone targets that end up in touchdowns and, and, and gives you a big week. Yeah. Uh, but getting back to Parker, I, I do I do like the play of Parker. I think that if you're going to play him, you're dancing with the devil. You are. But, yeah. Uh, outside of that. So, and that's, I mean, the, the Dolphins aren't going to be winning this game. That's It's a good... Uh, probably not. Unlike quick, last, last week was 15-13 against Baltimore. They didn't need to do much. Here's a quick reminder uh, for strategy-wise. Let's say you're newer to a keeper league. Uh, Devontae Parker, because uh, you only keep a couple guys. Parker is is very available. He's only owned in 40% of ESPN leagues. He is a guy that you need to just throw on your bench right now, no matter what, if moving forward, because you don't know how the year is going to end. Uh, these guys pop up at the end of every year, so I think this is a just a good public service, service announcement, announcement for it. maybe you're a little bit of a newer player. This is a strategy you need to look at now. Totally is, agree. Totally agree. Put him on your bench. All right, I'm going to give you my tight end start of the week. We'll get your guys's. Mine's Julius Thomas. I went with him. He had 11, 22, and 8 fantasy points the last three games. And the thing in common, he scored in every single one of them. He's being involved in the red zone. He's becoming more a part of the offense, and we saw what Bortles could do last week. He's playing against Indianapolis this week, who's a bottom half defense against the tight end. And so I like Julius Thomas. He's a really bona fide, strong, uh, solid, solid tight end start. Nice. Uh, for me, the tight end start is Austin Sferian Jenkins. He is. He was targeted. He wasn't on the field that much last game. They were working him back from his... 21 of 71 snaps. Yeah, exactly. And he still had a decent fantasy day. And the matchup here is, is what I really love about it. The New Orleans Saints are just giving it up to the tight end. In fact, the New Orleans Saints, who are the worst defense pretty much in the league... Uh, you know, over the last three weeks to the wide receiver, they have given up very few yards. It's all going to the tight end. So it's just a good, uh, good matchup. Good matchup. Good upside. And I, he's available. He represents upside to me. He could have a big game out of nowhere. And I'm going a little bit sneakier with my tight end. I don't mind that. I thought about him. It's Kobe Fleener against Jacksonville. Here is Jacksonville's. That uh, is a desperation tight end start. Uh, but here's numbers that Jacksonville has allowed to the tight end. Week 10, 11 catches. The next week, 12 catches. Then only five to San Diego, but two touchdowns. And then the following week to Tennessee, 10 catches. So, I mean, double-digit catches to the tight end three of the last four weeks, uh, including six touchdowns to the tight end position. Uh, and you got, it, we assume it's Hasselbeck. It could be Charlie Whitehurst. Uh, either way, I, I look for Kobe Fleener to get some sneaky targets in. I don't mind that. Deeper leagues, he's a really good start. I don't know how many guys I'm starting him over, but I like the matchup, and I thought about him a little bit myself, so I really like that. All right, guys, that is it for today's show. We went a little bit longer. We'll be back with the rest of the Fantasy Forecast tomorrow. We'll get you some DFS knowledge, and we'll get you ready for Week 14. And the playoffs, we're thankful that you joined us today. Make sure you check out PokerStars.net. Thank you for supporting the show, and we will be back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully none of us strong, have a tear. Strong finish. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.